Cyrus the Great created the Achaemenid Empire as the first significant superpower in the Near East by the late 6th century BC. After Cyrus passed away, his son and heir Cambyses II launched an invasion of the Kingdom of Egypt, the last major power left in the area, to carry on his father's legacy. Due to his military prowess, Cambyses overthrew his neighbor in Africa and became Egypt's first Persian pharaoh. Early in the 6th century BC, Cambyses II, the oldest son of Cyrus the Great and Queen Cassandana, was born. As a member of the Achaemenid dynasty, he was descended from King Achaemenes, the mythological founder of the dynasty who ruled over the Persian city of Anshan in the late 8th century BC. After subduing the Medes, Neo-Babylonians and Lydians, his father Cyrus established the first Persian Empire. As a result, Cambyses became the heir apparent to the world's biggest and most potent empire. The regal titles King of Babylon and King of the Lands were worn by both Cyrus and his son to further suggest that Cambyses was the chosen heir to the Persian throne. A little clay item known as the Cyrus Cylinder bears inscriptions all around in Akkadian cuneiform script. It describes how the great Babylonian deity Marduk bestowed blessings upon both Cyrus and Cambyses, reaffirming their respective positions as king and successor. The Greek historian Herodotus, writing in the 5th century BC, states that Cambyses accompanied Cyrus on his last expedition in 530 BC, but was banished before to his father's loss at the hands of Queen Tomyris and her wandering Massagate troops. Cambyses, the next monarch of the Achaemenid Empire, conquered Egypt in an attempt to carry on his father's policies and realize his dream of subjugating the whole Near East to Persian control. Herodotus, however, claims that Cambyses' main reason for invading Egypt was to exact revenge on Pharaoh Amasis II for tricking him during a marriage proposal. The Egyptian monarch granted Cambyses' request to marry his daughter, but out of concern that she might wind up as the king's concubine, Amasis sent Nitetis, a woman who was described as tall and beautiful by Herodotus, as a stand-in. As soon as Nitetis arrived in Persia, she disclosed the pharaoh's evil scheme and her actual identity since she was unwilling to participate in the lie. Furious, Cambyses moved rapidly to organize a full-scale invasion of Egypt. The aged pharaoh passed away shortly after and was replaced by his inexperienced son, Samtik III, in 526 BC, meaning the monarch would never exact his own retribution. In advance, Cambyses commanded the building of 300 trireme vessels, the majority of which were built and manned by Phoenicians, establishing Persia's fleet. Because of their reputation as maritime experts, Phoenicians were frequently engaged by other nations. With the help of his recently commissioned navy, Cambyses captured the island of Cyprus with relative ease. The island had been ruled by Egypt for about 50 years. The native Cypriot kings were permitted to maintain their position of authority, but they were required to tribute the Achaemenid Empire going forward. Furthermore, Cambyses deftly arranged a contract with the Arabs, who ruled the desert regions separating his realm from Egypt. The agreement gave the Persian army enough water to reach the Nila River and safe passage. Furthermore, it gave Cambyses control over well-known autonomous areas like Gaza, which the monarch designated as the invasion's base of operations. In May of 525 BC, the city of Pelusium, which is situated far northeast of the Nile Delta, hosted the first significant conflict between Persia and Egypt. The Persians took advantage of the Egyptians' apprehension about injuring animals they considered sacred, such dogs, lambs and cats, by stationing them all along the front lines of the conflict. Many Egyptian troops chose to run away or surrender rather than take the chance of hurting an animal because they were so afraid of upsetting their gods. It is said that Persian soldiers avoided opposing archer fire by attaching cats to their shields and even hurling them at their adversaries during combat. This is among the first cases of psychological warfare in history that has been documented. Only 7,000 Persians were slaughtered in the bloodbath that claimed the lives of roughly 50,000 Egyptians when the Persians overran their adversaries. When Herodotus visited the location 80 years after the Battle of Pelusium, 
He even said that he walked through a sea of skulls. In total confusion, Pharaoh Samtik and his surviving warriors fled south to Memphis in an attempt to save their lives. The remaining Egyptian soldiers were quickly routed by the Persian armies when they besieged Memphis. Cambyses was victorious in this pivotal battle and became the first Persian monarch in Egyptian history. After barely six months as king of Egypt, Samtik was overthrown, arrested, and sent in chains to the city of Susa, where he committed himself. After winning, Cambyses removed Amasis's body from his tomb and had it desecrated in an attempt to shame and punish the departed king. He gave the command for his men to burn, beat, and stab the mummified corpses of the pharaoh. In Persia and Egypt, burning a dead person was frowned upon as being highly disrespectful, if not criminal. With Cambyses' great accomplishment, the 27th dynasty of Egypt came under Persian dominion, ending the reign of the native Egyptians. For the first time in Egypt's history, the dynasty will function as a satrapy of the Achaemenid Empire, ruling over the country from afar. Cambyses adopted the customs of the people he subjugated, much like his father had done. The Egyptian priests bestowed upon him an official royal titulary and allowed him to partake in religious rites. Herodotus, however, described Cambyses as a crazy king who destroyed royal tombs, mocked local deities, and pillaged temples. The Greek historian stated, I am convinced by all the evidence that Cambyses was seriously deranged, in reference to the king's mental health. In truth, Cambyses is supposed to have suffered from a grave ailment from birth, which some refer to as the holy disease. In any event, it would not be implausible for a person experiencing a severe physical ailment to simultaneously be mentally unwell. Herodotus continues by claiming that Cambyses amassed an army to pose a threat to the Oracle of Amun at the western desert of Egypt's Siwa Oasis. A strong sandstorm buried all 50,000 Persian troops who had been chosen for this mission dead. They were halfway through their desert expedition. A wind arose from the south, strong and deadly, bringing with it vast columns of whirling sand, which entirely covered up the troops and caused them to disappear, the historian said in his account of their fate. Egyptologists currently believe that this myth is fake and believe that Petubastis III, a rebellious local Egyptian prince, ambushed Cambyses' lost army, causing them to perish rather than a sandstorm. Following his conquest of Egypt, the king turned his attention to the eastern Libyan area of Cyrenaica. The people living there were descended from Greek settlers who arrived in the area around a century prior, in 630 BC. Known as the Athens of Africa, Cyrene swiftly rose to prominence under their rule as a center of scholarship and culture in the Greek world. The Cyrenaic school of philosophy, which held that chasing and achieving pleasure should be one's ultimate purpose in life, originated in this region. King Arcesilaus II of Cyrene gave up his throne in an attempt to stop the slaughter after realizing his people had little chance against the Persians. Arcesilaus was granted permission to stay on his throne, although in the capacity of a puppet king, in exchange for Cyrenaica becoming a satrapy of the Achaemenid Empire. Cambyses also brought Princess Ladis of Cyrene, the sister of the king, back safely from Egypt, where she had been found after the invasion. The Greek African princess was given to Amasis II by her father as a sign of friendship, and she went on to become one of his numerous brides. Although Cambyses planned to attack the Phoenician port city of Carthage, the majority of the troops in his army were not eager to fight their own people. The monarch was compelled by this to give up on his ambition to subjugate one of the busiest trading hubs in antiquity. Cambyses, upon learning of an uprising back home, raced back to Persia to put an end to the rebels. The king would not survive, though, since on the way he inexplicably sustained a thigh wound that would eventually get septic and kill him three weeks later in June 522 BC at the Syrian city of Agbatana. After seven years of reigning without a male heir, Cambyses was replaced by his younger brother Bardia, also known as Smerdis. After ruling for a few months, seven Persian noblemen killed him after calling him a forger. The other six noblemen would choose Darius, one of the conspirators who claimed to be a cousin of Cyrus the Great, to be the next emperor. Cambyses II established the Achaemenid Empire as the only superpower in the area. 
and became Egypt's first Persian king via formidable military prowess and astute diplomacy.